Swift and Tips Podcast. So Apple is saying, okay, you have one code for everything, but in reality, mm -hmm. I mean, how, how hard is that? I mean, what, what, what do you think is, or are the pain points of multi-platform? Oh, there, there are tons of pain points, starting with API availability. I mean, things like list styles appear different on iOS and macOS. And so for every single list that I have in LaunchBuddy, I have an uh, if available iOS check to change the list style on iOS, and then another else uh, elif available macOS check to change the list style on macOS. So even just these minor things, they add up over time. So it's the list styles, it's the form styles, it's the order of buttons in alerts, it's how a sheet appears on iOS. A sheet is a completely different experience compared to macOS. On macOS, I would say a sheet is more the way that an alert appears on iOS. It's just a, a, a thing in the middle of the screen, right? Whereas on yeah. iOS, it blocks the entire screen. So yes, you can reuse some of the code for, um, for example, um, a view with all of your tasks right now, a list of with like three columns of uh, backlog, working on and done. Of course, I can reuse that code across the different um, operating systems. And some of the like editing your release uh, views and stuff like that, I can reuse that. But all of the glue that sticks that together, that is very platform de uh, dependent. So uh, another example is navigation. On iOS, you have push navigation between basically all of your your screens. You sometimes mm -hmm. you may you might have a sheet, sometimes you might have a full screen cover, but most of the time it's a push navigation. <clears throat> and then you have this tab view at the bottom. But on macOS, all of that is completely different. You barely have any push navigation. You mostly have your uh, your navigation bar on the leading side of your screen, where you select the tab that you're, that you're opening. Uh, so all of this like navigation stuff, all of this glue that, that sticks the app together is completely different on, in all of the platforms. And one thing that um, I found when um, adding the iPad version of LaunchBody is that iPad is actually very similar to macOS, and it's not that similar to iOS. So uh, mm. I actually okay. don't reuse any of my navigation code from iOS for iPadOS. It's basically the macOS stuff. Wow. So it, it, there's there's tons of learnings in there. And, and another one that really, really, really annoys me is images. <laughs> so images, you, you have SwiftUI.image, right? The thing that you use to display an image from your asset catalog. Then you mm -hmm. have async image to load an image from your backend or whatever. Yeah. But what do you do if you have the image saved to the file system? You usually create a UI image with mm -hmm. the data and initialize it like that. But there's no UI image on macOS. There's no. NS image. Mm -hmm. So you no. have to have your mm -hmm. own bridging that translates to NS image on macOS and UI image on iOS. So. Oh, Apple gives us okay. SwiftUI and SwiftUI.image, and you think, wow, that's good. I can use that everywhere. But in reality, you still have to write platform-dependent code, and you still have to use AppKit. You still have to use UIKit. So, OK, hold on for a second. So because I'm, I'm trying also to create a, a multi-platform app. So are you saying that the image, uh, I mean, SwiftUI image that we use in iOS or iPad, it is not compatible with Mac? No, the SwiftUI image is compatible with Mac. Okay. But in, in my case, so. Um, when you uh, create a project in LaunchBody, so let's say you're working on um, an app called Fitness Tracker. So you, mm -hmm. you create a project Fitness Tracker in LaunchBody, and then I allow you to add your app icon to the project just so it looks nice in, 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 the, in your project yeah. list in LaunchBody. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then, of course, I need to save that icon somewhere. So in, in LaunchBody, I save it to the file system. So I take the PNG, import it via a file importer, and then, uh, or a uh, yeah, I think File Importer is the, the SwiftUI API for that. Mm -hmm. And then I save that to the file system. And if I want to display that image, um, I take the URL, create a data object from that URL, and pass the data object into a UI image, and then take that UI image and pass it into a SwiftUI image. Uh -huh. But UI image is not available on macOS. So this entire piece of code, which is probably uh -huh. like 10, 15 lines of code, I would say, is different on iOS than it is on macOS because the API to create an NS image is different from the API <laughs> to create a UA image. So you have to create okay. your own wrappers around that. So okay. the, the issue is basically, um, I love SwiftUI, I totally do. And, and I love that parts of it are multi-platform and some things work great. For example, sheets and forms and stuff like that works great. And you don't need mm -hmm. to change anything. Also toolbar APIs, all of that, I, I really enjoy that. And basic button styles, but then the things where you do go back to UIKit. 
those are the things that are a pain on a multi-platform app because you have, will have to duplicate that code because all of the UI kit stuff just isn't available on macOS. And it also, I'm not sure if it, if all of that stuff is available on Vision OS either. Good. That's a good question. I'm not sure yeah. about it, but probably not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So of course you could uh, solve that problem by using third party libraries that extend Swift UI with some of the UI kit features and so on. And perhaps they're all supported to AppKit. But uh, I personally don't like to use too many um, third party libraries because I like programming, I like coding, and I want to do it myself. And this isn't a fancy business project that needs to make uh, a lot of money and where a lot of people are working on it. So I can afford to just write the code myself. And, mm -hmm. and that's why I have these pain points. Now, in a different setting, you might not have these pain points, but that's just mm -hmm. my experience. And it is a lot of fun to, to write multi-platform code, especially when you can reuse parts of your code. And of course, also all of your logic, you can reuse that. All of your, um, so Launchpad uses core data. Of course, I can reuse all of the core data stuff and uh, widget stuff I can also reuse and stuff like that. And that's a lot of fun. But to me, it's also a lot of fun to, to write the other, the other code that, that doesn't work uh, out of the bat <laughs> where you have to do it, where you have to do it yourself. Um, yeah. But uh, that, that, that's just because it's a personal project, right? In a work project, that, that might be a completely different situation. Um, if you're just using SwiftUI, you, you probably don't have to uh, have a lot of different pieces of code for different platforms. But having this division between SwiftUI and UI, that's what, what makes it hard to port your um, mm. project. OK. If someone that is listening uh, or watching this episode wants to or have an idea of, OK, I want to start a multi-platform application, what would you recommend? I mean, would you recommend going further I mean, thinking about all the different platforms uh, from the scratch, or would you recommend to go first and implement your stuff with, let's say, iOS or macOS, one of those, and then adapt it to support the other platforms later? What, what do you think is, is, is a better idea? Yeah, it's tough because I'm setting a bad example here because I always rush right into coding. I don't, I don't ever do any mock-ups or anything like that. But I would think that if you take the time and create a mock-up for how you would want the screen to look like on macOS, how you would like it to look like on iOS, and how you would like it to look on iPadOS and Vision or even the watch or TV, then there are so many different platforms. I think if you take that step, then you, from the get-go, know which code you will be able to reuse. And then from the get-go, you can think about your architecture and design your app in a way where it automatically adapts to the different platforms and where you don't have to have all of this code duplication. So in LaunchBuddy, I used, uh, when I first wrote the iOS app, I redid all of the UI from scratch. So I had one chunk of code only running on macOS. Then I had the shared code for core data. And then I had another chunk of code doing all of the iOS UI. And that was also not, not a good idea. Of course, it was faster to implement because I didn't have to touch my old code. And touching my old code is always bad because it takes a lot of time because I always forget <laughs> what I wrote and what my my uh, uh, idea was. Um, mm -hmm. But then uh, half a year later, I went back and I actually uh, deleted all of the iOS code and adapted the macOS code. So now I have one code base again that's mostly shared uh, between mm -hmm. the different platforms. And uh, as I said, most screens are shared and then just like navigation bars and um, tab views and the settings screen, for example, those are different for different platforms. So settings, for example, I don't reuse any of that across the platforms because they're just different. The iOS settings differ a lot from the macOS settings because on macOS, okay. I have settings for the window background, for the size that LaunchBody has when it first opens. I have settings okay. for menu bar items. All of that doesn't really make sense to have in a shared piece of code. So that is detached from the different platforms. But my recommendation would probably be to start with mockups start thinking about which piece of code you can probably share, which piece of code you can't share, and then go from there. What, what do you recommend for mocking your application? Pen and paper. Do <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. I like that. <laughs> so I, I, I don't use, I, I mean, I use Figma, <laughs> but only for my YouTube thumbnails. <laughs> I don't use okay. it for, for its intended purpose of, uh, of sketching out uh, uh, software. So I either. Um, for the multi-platform stuff, I would recommend pen and paper or the design tool that you're familiar with, with. So I think that being an expert in one thing is better than being mediocre at several things. 
So mm -hmm. I would say I will not recommend a specific tool to you. If you have already uh, got some experience with Figma, use Figma. If you got some experience with Sketch, use Sketch. Photoshop, Photoshop, pen and paper, then do that. Um, for a project where it's only iOS or it's only um, on the Mac, I just go right into SwiftUI. Because to me, personally, with my experience, I haven't used a lot of design tools in the past. So I'm just way faster coding coding up a mock-up in SwiftUI using a live preview than I would mm -hmm. be in learning to use Sketch. So my suggestion would be, what are you already an expert on or what have you already used in the past and use that to create the mock-ups. Don't need to learn anything new.